Episode 7 The Ferret Adventure Meeting Toast Welcome to The Story Seekers, a place where imagination runs wild and every story is an adventure. I'm Daniel, your guide through worlds of wonder, friendship, and discovery. Each episode, join the four siblings, Sina, Oni, Brother, and Nessie, along with their loyal dog Olive as they explore mysterious lands, solve puzzles, and learn life's valuable lessons. We will learn about the world around us, explore the importance of imagination, and learn about living with disabilities within the family. Here, on The Story Seekers, every story is an opportunity to learn, laugh, and grow. Are you ready to journey into a new story? Grab your sense of adventure, because the next tale is about to begin. Welcome, friends, to another exciting adventure with the Story Seekers. Today's story is titled, The Ferret Adventure, and as you'll see, we will discover a new friend along the way. This story helps us learn about and appreciate the beautiful nature that surrounds us. We join Brother and Nessie in their backyard for a fun day on the trampoline. But little do they know, a small discovery will lead them on a big adventure. Let's jump in and see what happens. Look how high it can bounce, Nessie. Brother glances down at his wristwatch. And wow, we've been jumping for almost an hour now. Wow, brother, you're almost touching the sky. As they laugh and bounce, Nessie's sharp eyes catch something moving in the field. It's small, quick, and furry. Brother, look. What's that in the grass? Let me see. Oh wow, that's a black-footed ferret. Did you know I love these animals? Really? Why do you like them? They're super interesting. They're nocturnal which means they're active at night, and they're great at tunneling. As they are watching, the ferret seems to notice them, and becomes curious of them as well. Brother isn't sure, but he thinks he sees the ferret smile at them. That's so weird. I thought I saw him smile at us. Nessie, do you want to take a little adventure with just brother, and find out more? And just like that, our story seeker's curiosity is peak. What other secrets does this little ferret hold? Stay tuned as brother and Nessie embark on a miniature adventure to find out. As brother and Nessie walk towards the little ferret, their imaginations take over. What would it be like to see the world from a ferret's perspective? Brother gets an idea, so he takes Nessie's hand, and in a blink, they find themselves shrinking down, down, down. Whoa, Nessie, look at us. We're as small as the ferret now. Everything looks so big from down here. Carefully, they approach the ferret's burrow. It's like entering a whole new world, full of tunnels and secret chambers. This must be where the ferret sleeps. Look at all this soft grass and fur. And these tunnels. They go in all directions. How does the ferret remember where to go? Ferrets have a great sense of smell and memory. They use these tunnels to stay safe and find food. As they explore deeper, they discover a stash of food and encounter some playful insects. Look, brother. The ferret stores its food here. It's like a little pantry. Yeah, they're really smart. They keep food for when they need it. It's important for their survival, especially since they're nocturnal. With each new discovery, Brother and Nessie gain a deeper appreciation for the little ferret and its ingeniously constructed home. But their adventure is far from over, as there's still more to learn about this fascinating creature and its environment. As their underground adventure continues, Brother and Nessie, now deep inside the burrow, meet a friendly black-footed ferret. It's time for an enlightening conversation. Hello there. We didn't expect to meet anyone down here. Hello. I'm a black-footed ferret. Welcome to my home. You're so cute. Can we call you Toast? Toast. I like that. Yes, you can call me Toast. Toast begins to share fascinating facts about his life and the world of ferrets. What do ferrets like you eat, Toast? We primarily hunt for prairie dogs. They're a crucial part of our diet. We also eat small mammals and insects. Do you have to be careful of any animals? Yes, we watch out for eagles, owls, and coyotes which are also known as prairie wolves. Our burrows help keep us safe from predators. As their conversation unfolds, Brother and Nessie are brimming with questions for their new friend Toast. Toast, how many black-footed ferrets like you are there in the wild? Not many, I'm afraid. We're a rare species. Conservation efforts are helping, but there are still only a few hundred of us in the wild. Toast, why do you have a black mask on your face? It's a natural part of our fur pattern. 
It helps us blend into the night when we hunt. It helps our eyes with the glare of the bright sun in the daytime if we have to be outside in the sunlight. And it's also a part of what makes us unique. Where in the world do black-footed ferrets live? We mainly live in North America, especially in prairies and grasslands where prairie dogs, our main food source, are found. What do you do in winter, Toast? During winter, we stay in our burrows more to stay warm. We have thick fur that keeps us cozy, and our stored food helps us through the cold months. How do you tell when it's safe to come out of your burrow and hunt for food? We rely on our keen senses. Our sharp hearing and smell help us detect if predators are around. At night, when it's safer and our predators are less active, we venture out to hunt. As they walk through the winding tunnels, Toast explains more about the social life of ferrets and the playful nature. Do you live with other ferrets here, Toast? We ferrets are quite social. We communicate with scents and sounds and love playing with each other, especially our weasel war dance when we're happy. Olive rolls on the ground while several baby ferrets laugh and play on her tummy. Olive loves tummy rubs. <coughs> the children laugh at the sight. That sounds fun. We saw your food stash earlier. Do all ferrets store food like that? Yes, storing food is vital for our survival especially since we're nocturnal. It helps us during times when hunting is tough. Filled with new knowledge and admiration for these creatures, Brother and Nessie realize how special and important each animal is in God's creation. Brother and Nessie feel a deep connection to Toast and his world. The journey in the burrow has opened their eyes to the wonders and challenges of being a black-footed ferret. With their adventure in the burrow coming to an end, Brother, Nessie, and Toast settle down for a serious conversation about what it means to be an endangered species. Toast, you mentioned that black-footed ferrets are endangered. What does that mean exactly? Being endangered means there aren't many of us left. Our survival is at risk due to things like habitat loss, diseases, and predators. That's so sad. Is there anything people can do to help? Yes, protecting our habitats, preventing diseases, and conservation efforts like breeding programs can really make a difference. Brother and Nessie listen intently, their hearts heavy with the new understanding but also filled with a desire to help. Brother looks at his watch and realizes it's almost dinner time. We need to head home, Nessie. We'll miss you, Toast. We learned a lot from you. Thank you for showing us your world. I want to give you something, Toast. Brother carefully takes off his watch and gently puts it around Toast's neck. Now, we can find each other again. It's a promise to help protect you and your home. Thank you, brother. I'll keep it safe. Goodbye, friends. With heartfelt goodbyes, brother and Nessie promise to spread the word about protecting nature and Toast's home. As they step out of the burrow, they find themselves back to their normal size, heading home with a newfound mission. <laughs> Today's story reminds us of the beauty of nature that God created around us and our responsibility to take care of it. Let's look at a few verses that can help us learn more about what God says about our place in nature. Psalm chapter 24 verse 1 reminds us that everything on earth belongs to the Lord. This includes all creatures, great and small, like the black-footed ferrets we learned about today. It says, the earth is the Lord's, and everything in it, the world, and all who live in it. This verse teaches us that we are caretakers of God's creation. It's our responsibility to protect and cherish all forms of life. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 10 highlights the importance of caring for all creatures. It's a call for kindness and stewardship towards animals. It reads, A righteous man cares for the needs of his animal, but the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. This wisdom teaches us to be compassionate and responsible, ensuring that all animals, like Toast the Ferret, have a safe and healthy environment. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, we are reminded of the responsibility given to humanity to care for Earth's creatures. It declares, and God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living thing that moves on the ground. Dominion here means stewardship, taking care of animals and our environment, much like Brother and Nessie did today with Toast. As we say goodbye, let's remember the lessons we learned today about caring for God's creation. Join us next time for another adventure with the Story Seekers.